Hey guys, I thought we would look at uh, ESR or Capacitive Equivalent Series Resistance today. Specifically, uh, I'll just cover what it is and then we'll go over to the bench and look at three different meters that have different price ranges to see which one might be the best. So what is ESR? Well, to put it simply, let's take a look at this diagram on DigiKey. ESR in a, a capacitor is a series resistance that is built into the capacitor. So if, if, you, if you take a model of a capacitor, imagine that this is the capacitor here, and this is the series, this is the equivalent series resistance. It also has some inductance as you can see. So you don't want a capacitor that has a high ESR. And typically what you find, especially with electrolytic capacitors is, is as the capacitor starts to go bad, the ESR increases. And you see this typically in digital electronics, which are very sensitive to any noise, which is typically where the capacitors are being used to decrease power supply line noise. And as that ESR increases, you start to see that your digital uh, device, maybe a television, uh, a digital TV tuner box, whatever it might be, anything that's digital, you start to see that it acts squirrely. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it'll work for a while, then it doesn't. Um, and those types of problems typically point to an issue with capacitive ESR. So what we're going to do is go over to the bench. I'm going to show you three different um, ESR meters. And I have a bad cap. I just pulled out of actually a digital tuner for a friend of mine. And we'll go ahead and test that against these three devices. We'll come back and talk about our findings. And we'll look at each of the devices online. So if you want to buy an ESR meter, which is, is a really good idea if you're going to do any kind of electronic repair. Uh, you can make a more informed decision. So let's head over to the bench and take a look at them. All right, so these are the meters. We have the multifunction meter, the uh, Miser 100, and the GME. Um, I have already turned on the Miser 100 and um, zeroed it. You basically put the leads together, press zero, and it zeroes it. The GME auto zeroes when you turn it on. You wait for the beep. There it is. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to look at a 330 microfarad, 330 microfarad cap. This is a good cap. We're going to drop it in the multi-tester, turn it on, And it does, it identifies 326 microfarads, but it shows 0, 0.00 for the ESR. Not correct. We'll go ahead and try it on the Miser. Okay. And it's coming up with 0 0.16 ohms. And look at the bottom, it says good if C, the capacitor is less than 470 uh, microfarads, which it is. It is a good one. And last but not least, we will take the, top of the uh, tweezers here and we will touch it. And that is telling me, let's see if I can get you to see this. It is showing me uh, 0 0.2, and if you scroll across, you will see that it goes 220 is green and 470 is red. So that's not real helpful in this case. In fact, it made me think it's somewhat suspect, but it's not. It's good. So that kind of frustrates me about that meter. Let's go ahead and take a look at one that we know is bad. This is 1000 microfarad, and it is the one that I pulled out of the uh, 
digital tuner over there and which is what fixed it. So let's go ahead and plug it into the multi-tester and turn the multi-tester on. And there we go. So, you know, the accuracy of the value, it says it's 1,023 or 1,032 microfarads. That's probably very accurate. Um, however, the ESR is still uh, 0.10. So let's see how that is against the other ones. So we're going to hook it up here to the Miser, Miser 100. Okay, now we're getting 0 0.261. Let me get that cat hair out of the way. Yep, and notice what it says at the bottom. Good if capacitor's value is less than 330. Well, we, it's not. It's 1,000 microfarads. So this is a bad capacitor. And last but not least, let's test it with the GME. The GME, it's coming up as 0 0.3, and if we scroll over, I'm trying to make it so you can see it, 1K over there, it's in the red. It's bad. So, I think after looking at these, you can tell that these two are fairly accurate. I really like uh, the Miser uh, better uh, than this one. Uh, the thing I like about the GME is, you know, in-circuit and auto... Um, auto discharge of the caps. As you can see, I wrote myself a note on this one. There's a reason for that. I broke it and um, I had to fix it because I did not discharge the cap first. This I think is a great little multi-tester, but not for ESR. All right, so let's go back and take a look at the Amazon screens for these devices in case you decide to get one. All right, so that was pretty interesting. Um, actually seeing the caps getting tested and comparing them. It, it looked to me like both the, the Miser 100 and the GME were pretty accurate. The Miser had uh, um, another a decimal place of accuracy. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at these. These are uh, sorted based upon price. So the multi-tester actually comes from a number of different Chinese uh, companies or names of Chinese companies. Um, I can't really recommend this if you're only wanting to test ESR. However, if you want to test other components, I have found that it's actually extremely helpful and certainly worth $22 or $23. Um, in terms of the Miser 100, um, as we noticed, it actually has uh, an additional um, um, decimal point uh, uh, for accuracy. Uh, I think it goes to a hundredth. Um, and we also noticed that it's fairly easy to use. Remember to zero it before you start. Also, you need to remember to discharge the cap uh, before you, you, you uh, hook it up. Um, like I said, I damaged mine. It was easy to fix. You open it up, you replace the diode, but it's not designed to be replaced, just so you know. It's not like in there between two pinching connectors or something. You do have to desolder it, um, but it was fairly easy to fix. Um, so this is the one I recommend, $51. Um, the GME, which is the professional in-circuit uh, ESR tester that I recently purchased, um, I haven't had a lot of experience with it. Um, I think that uh, it could be very helpful and useful. I, I didn't like the fact that on the 330 microfarad uh, cap, it was kind of like in the middle. Um, that would have been a tough call, I guess. Um, but with the Miser, it was kind of obvious it was okay. Um, Let's see here. Uh, it has you know less accuracy in terms of decimal point. It does have some sound, which I actually think is pretty cool. So depending on how many beeps it makes, the, the more beeps between one beep and three beeps is a uh, indicates a range starting with a lower ESR to a higher ESR. So if you hear three beeps, chances are you got a bad one. You can look at the of course the the uh, chart on the device to to determine how accurate that is. But um, it's probably not a bad device, but if, but if I was going to only buy one, I'd buy the Miser 100. All right, guys. Well, remember, take care. Learn something new every day. See you next time.